They beat this guy. They beat him so bad, his arm is up. He was like this in the cuffs. How you like this in the cuffs? Who was whooping your ass with your arm like this in the cuffs? Yo, what up, y'all? It's the Ronnie Ray Show. We're back again with the segments, man. It's the off my chest. Remember the classics? Random list. I'm a SAG actor in the shout out portion. That's right. So we're going to start right now. You've seen the show? Um, love the show? Subscribe to the show and let me know. Hey, man, I appreciate your show. Something, man. I appreciate it coming in from time to time. First segment. Let's go. All right. This is off my chest. We were done recording this week. <laughs> I was done. And then about less than 12 hours later, some shit popped up on my phone. And I was like, yo, what the fuck? Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for hip hop history. Dave Chappelle was attacked on stage at the Hollywood Bowl. God, <laughs> this dude's name is Isaiah Lee. He came at the Dave with reckless abandon. I want to know something. How the fuck did he get there? This dude's supposed to be homeless. This dude named Isaiah Lee's supposed to be homeless. He had front row tickets. They said the nosebleeds were $300. How did he get in there? And then he come from the audience. It's not like he came from like the orchestra pit. He came from the audience. And he ran like a half block to tackle Dave. Dave falls, they attack. And they stump dude out. Damn it, they stump dude out. <laughs> I saw the longer clip, Dave. Dave was like, hold on, I need to see this shit. Hold on, see what he's doing. I'm gonna see if this as a statement. Everybody stumped his ass. Jamie Foxx, Busta Rhymes, Chris Brown, you know he want to hit somebody. After it was over, here comes Chris Rock with perfect comedy timing. Was that Will Smith? <laughs> classic. Classic. That's so classic that I think Will, I think Chris Rock and Will set that shit up at the Oscars so Chris Rock can say that shit at Dave Chappelle's name. I blame Will. I blame Will for this. I blame Will for giving this dude the courage to want to bring his ass on stage. Yeah, and we still love Will, but hey, I blame Will for this. Will, you lucky you're beloved and famous because that probably could be you. You know what I'm saying? You don't know. They got Howie Mandel scared as hell. Hi, I'm Mandela. I don't think I want to perform no more. <laughs> I'm done. This is too much for me with the too much. This is too much. Harry Mandel, scared to perform. Been performing since the late 70s. Harry Mandel is scared to perform again. Another takeaway is Dave Chappelle, you need more security. You need better security, Dave. There ain't no way in hell. You lucky this dude ain't have a weapon. You lucky he ain't have a weapon, especially as much as you're talking about these, these people. <laughs> like, bro, you need to beef up that damn security. That dude tackled you. He could have had a knife stuck your ass and just stood and point blank and popped you. We don't want to see you go out like that, Dave. Fire your security. Hire some new motherfuckers. But what's the main takeaway for this? The main takeaway is this, people. Audience people, come to the show and enjoy it. You guys are not a part of the shit. Like, this, they said this dude did it for clout. He got a damn rap song with some shit called Dave Chappelle. And he probably going to add it to the video or some shit. But he took fuck beating. They beat the shit out this guy. They beat him so bad, his arm is fucked up. He, he was like this in the cuffs. How you like this in the cuffs? Who was whooping your ass with your arm like this in the cuffs? Audience people, let us comedians work. I'm not on Dave Chappelle, Dave Chappelle, Dave Chappelle, I'm not. I'm not on Dave Chappelle's level at the time, but I am on stage. And my shit has less security than that. And that's not the first time I've seen that before though. You know what I'm saying? Not, not being tackled. I'm people who attack the stage a lot. I remember I was doing a show in Inglewood. Late great Ricky Harris is a host. And we're in this damn club and Ricky's talking, and dude said something. Ricky like, man, shut your ass up. Ricky was talking one way, he turned around, dude was in his face. He's like, Ricky turned around, look down, what you gonna do, bro? What your ass gonna do? And dude got down, I thought this nigga was, no, dog. Dude, it'll happen to you. You will get your ass served. I ain't talking about dance back. All these people, sit back, relax, enjoy the show, pay for the arts, man. You're not getting an uh, attack personally. But in Dave Chappelle's case, um, Maybe because, you know, he's dealing with something different. He has to be careful. He need to beef up that security, man. This guy had a fake handgun with a real knife um, attached to it. And he won't be facing federal charges. What the, what is, so you just attack comedians. You come to this big ass place, get front row tickets, jump your ass on stage and tackle Dave's pill. Dave's a pro. Dave finished that show out, didn't he? Made him even more famous. 
for bullshit. <laughs> Made them more famous. Audience people, come to the show. Sit back. Relax. It's all jokes. Next segment. All right. Remember the classes we go on music again? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. One of the most underrated MCs of all time, down south, Texas, Houston, Texas, that is. The Brad Jordan, a.k.a. Scarface, a.k.a. Action Love, come on! Hey, man, Mr. Scarface is back, 1990. This is the, this is one of the baddest fucking rap albums ever. And y'all probably, like, here's, here's what you do, you say it's the bad, it's one of the, this is when I started listening to music, I'm like, rap music, I'm like, yo, this right here? Change game. Because we knew him from the Ghetto Boys. I knew him from the Ghetto Boys. But I'm like, yo, he got a solo joint? And then Willie D dropped. And everybody bumping Willie D on ball head holes and shit. And I'm like, eh, it's all right. I mean, but I like Willie D. I like Willie D. But, but fucking Scarface? Man, come on. Favorite tracks. Mr. Scarface is back. Yo ass got took. Damn. Man to pray second to die. Man to pray second to die. It's one of the best videos ever. Like, I, I think he only did one video for the album. He did one video for the album, and it's the best video, one of the best rap videos ever. Dude, it was like a movie. And they talk about Biggie storytelling. I think Scarface got him. I, I think with that one, Scarface got him. And y'all can be mad all y'all want to. And, and, nah, he, Biggie was warning. Warning was dope. Storytelling was dope. But this shit, men to pray second to die. You like, damn. Everybody dies in that shit. <laughs> I'm like, damn. <laughs> Ran around the corner as he passed, slit his throat. Dude, what the fuck? You sitting there listening to the, the, the fucking um, radio or whatever the fuck we were playing the cassette back then. We like, what the fuck am I listening to? The mo One of the most underrated MCs of all time is Scarface. Like when I was watching uh, uh, backstage, Jay-Z, DMX, Met the Man, Red Man. And the only thing they asked DMX, who was, his, who was the best MC? He said, best in C's, Mize, myself, Jay-Z. He's always Jay-Z and Scarface. Scarface! I ain't never getting heard nobody give Scarface no props. That was the first time I heard another rapper give him the props like that. He deserves it. He was dropping down. But I remember he dropped that second one, The World Is Mine. And they were like, when are you going to drop the next one? Y'all can do another one next week. I'm like, I ain't know you can write that damn fast. You the first one I saw I write that fast. In a lot of people's eyes, this is probably not his best album. But it's my favorite one. They're gonna probably say the fix, because Kanye did a lot on that. But this one, it, it was it was gutter, man. Dead diary. I said your ass got took. I'm dead. I'm dead. I am dead. Biggie took that. Ready to die I'm at the end. Biggie took that shit. Classic, man. Mr. Scarface is back. He was like 19 years old talking mad shit. Brad Joy, man. AKA Action Love, AKA Scarface. One of the greatest MCs of all time. Next segment. Okay, here we go. It's Ronnie Ray's random list. Here we go again. This one is dedicated to my own boy, Cordell Pace, because we talk a lot in probably every seventh conversation. This comes up. Which Michael Jackson videos were better than the other one? I'm like, yo, this is a conversation ongoing for about two, well, two damn decades. So let me squash it. Let me put it on footage and talk about it. I'm going to put my top nine Michael Jackson videos. And before we start, I'm about to disappoint a lot of people. <laughs> like, hey, man, what the fuck that? Where's that one? Where's that one? Hey, man, it's my list. Write your own damn list. Well, I love them all, but I don't have enough time. My, Michael Jackson's my favorite artist ever. So I have to, I have to shorten the video for editing purposes. <laughs> my brother like, all right, man, I ain't got all the time to be writing this shit. Yo, you need to cut that shit down to like nine. Okay. So nine is what it is. Number nine, beat it. They like, why is it so low? Cause my uncle said that's his favorite video. And I was like, yeah, man, yeah, I like it. I didn't, I didn't care for the song though. I never really liked the song. I never really liked the song cause I'm a Michael Jackson friend from Yay Ha. And that just it, it was a crossover. It was crossover and it got him what he wanted and that was dope. Okay, so number nine, beat it. Number eight, Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Bonus track on a bad album. Dude, that shit came out like 1988. It took me probably to 2000 to see how he actually did that shit. I don't, I don't know how they did that. That was the first time I've ever seen anything like that. The, the animated stuff and 
he dancing with the elephant man bones and he at the shrine of um Elizabeth Taylor. I'm like, shit. Then the song was dope. Number seven, the most expensive video of all time, people. Number seven, Scream. Michael Jackson and Jan Jackson together. We like, yeah, we got them together. Expensive video. Very expensive video. I think it was like $8 million or some shit. And like, song was okay. I like to hear the remix again. They had Tretch on Naughty by Nature. I know he's mad. Like, why don't they play the remix version with me? I don't, I don't know why. Um, but I, I, I dig the video, the, the dance off in the, in the middle at the end when they were dancing and shit. And it's like, yo, this, this, this is where it is. Yeah, brother against sister. It was good. It's two of my favorite artists of all time. That's what made it dope. I didn't. I can care less. They could have spent. They could have did that video in their backyard, and I'd have been just as happy. But hey, number seven, scream. Number six, number six is bad. Bad. He got Martin Scorsese. Enough said. Who you just can't get Martin Scorsese. Martin Scorsese do do dope ass movies and shit. He did Goodfellas. He did Casino. He did Raging Bull. You just can't get Martin Scorsese to come out. He did Color Money, the underrated movie, one of my favorite movies ever. Mike Cullen, the comeback album too. Mike is like two shades lighter than his piece. And what's the Snipes debut? What's the Snipes debut? You got to watch the Spike Lee thing. You ain't seen it. The funniest shit ever. <laughs> Mike was like, if I'm bad, you ain't nothing. You ain't nothing. And then he wanted to show they all go down and all the dancers are behind him and on the outtake, Wesley Snipes looking up. So what's up? Y'all gonna dance us to death? <laughs> I'm like, yo, just that alone. It makes the countdown. There's a blooper that makes the countdown. Man, great choreography. It was dope, man. Shout out to Mike. Number six, bad. Number five, The Way You Make Me Feel. 1987's The Way You Make Me Feel. I like the song. Like, I was happy. Like, you hear songs over and over on the radio. As a kid, I was okay with hearing it over and over on the radio. That's how good that song was to me. The girl in the video, fine still. I mean, she's like 60 something, 65 years old. She's still fine. I chase her around the table, like my uncle said. His performance on the Grammys, that song, that song was a beast. I love the song. So, hey, number five, the way you make me feel. Number four, rest in peace to John Singleton. Ah, oh, this had a gang cameo. This is probably Michael Jackson's blackest video ever. Remember the time. Killed it. Mike killed it, man. Do you remember? Man, come on, man. He broke it down like that ain't in the song. He I got you a remix, baby. He's like, boots. Come on, man. Ah. Oh, remember the time. Number four. Number three, y'all be like, what's number three? Number three is Earth Song. Y'all like, what? What is that? <laughs> what is Earth Song, Ronnie Ray? Earth Song, man. That song is epic, dog. I can listen to that shit, man. I, I go by the lakefront and I sit on a bitch and I play it with my headphones and I, I, and I'm like, yeah, life. <laughs> I can attack life. Me and life ain't got nothing on me, man. That that song make me want to go. It's slow and it's sad, but man, I feel it every time. Then I see the video, Mike holding the trees, the wind blowing in his face, like, ah! Number three, Earth Song. Number two, it's probably one of the most popular videos ever, if not the most popular videos. That one, this one, and this is America. Thriller. Thriller! This video was epic. I was, I was, a, kid, I was a kid, I remember seeing it. And I was scared. I remember seeing it when he did the eyes. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Ain't what the hell is this? And it's incredible. The choreography is incredible. And this is the one me and my friend argue about. He's like, man, Thriller's the best. And I'm probably, probably a majority of the world will say Thriller. I think, I'd say probably like 70% of Michael Jackson fans say Thriller's the best. And I'm like, yo, I disagree. But Thriller is, uh, is, is epic. You know what I'm saying? I can't knock it. It's, it's, it's a classic. It is meant to be among the top of somebody else's list. Not mine, because that's number two on my show. Ah, before we get to number one, honorable mentions. Honorable mentions is Billie Jean. Billie Jean, I like the song, the video, I can care less for. Uh, they don't care about us. He did two versions of that, one with Spike Lee. Two both with Spike Lee. I like that one. That would have probably been number 10. Also, Black and White, um, John Landis directed. Keep it in the closet, Naomi Campbell. Um, you rock my world with with Chris Tucker and um, Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando don't do nobody's damn videos. What the hell is? And also, Stranger in Moscow, man. Stranger in Moscow. Um, the, the the way it was shot was was beautiful, but it just didn't make the list. So those are the honorable mentions and more too, which is 
which is crazy. That's how dope Mike is. But we only had nine spots, and they didn't make it. All right. Number one, Michael Jackson videos of all time. Smooth criminal. Smooth criminal. Number one. Top to bottom. Number one. Thriller starts off slow. It's a whole story. It's this. It's bringing you in. Nah. When Smooth Criminal comes on, Michael Jackson comes in the room. Everybody looking at him. He goes in his pocket. He pulls out a quarter. He flings it across the damn room. The jukebox come on. The, sh the song, the video starts right then. Non-stop dancing. I didn't know what the hell he was talking about, but it sound cool. The choreography is top notch. Everything. He went, he went toward the dance floor. He went on the stage. He got off the stage. He went up the stairs. He went to the pool table. He went up the stairs again, almost getting stabbed in the back. He shoots the guy. He comes back down the stairs. He dances. He gets on the stage some more. Then he does some more baptism shit. I still don't know what the hell that means. A cat goes across the damn piano in tune. And then they oh, ain't he okay? Ain't he okay? Like, what if see, he just had the perfect video and he messed it up and he bringing them in. Yo, ain't he okay? And like, yeah, and they start dancing. Ah, oh, this is fucking awesome. It's the only video I think he did the moonwalk in. He did the lean. Man, I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear Thriller. I don't want to hear Thriller's dope. I don't want to hear Thriller. Smooth Criminal. Michael Jackson's best video. That, that's it. I, I just went through the whole thing, which I did long version. Don't go, don't, and you check it. If you've never seen it, don't look at that three minute version one. No, you have to watch the nine minute joint <laughs> on MJ. Watch that, and you'll be a fan for life, man. All right, here we go. I'm a SAG actor segment. This is a um, segment where I talk about TV shows, movies I've been on. And this one is probably by far my favorite job I ever had in my life. This project was called Kanoka Park. How did I get it? Because I was on the other show, Totally Busted. The guy who created that show decided to make a, a show um, like The Office, but in a porn studio. And I played the security guard, Keith Jameson. So I don't want to be here in security, but I'm doing this the best I can because I got a security. That's my job. But it's not my passion. My passion is to produce ideas, man. I got ideas going all over the place. Like my movie right here, right here. Escalators. I don't have a movie in here, but I got a box cup. I'm on my way. It's a car, Escalate. Ladies, you know what they are. Put them together, you got a hell of a movie. Escalators. I was probably one of two black people on the movie, on the TV show. My man, um, um, Chris, Chris Plessis was on the show. He played the boom mic guy. I, I never had, I had the most fun on this show. Guy, Nick Thomas, hit me up one, um, 2005, we was going to, it was a couple of weeks before, a week before, thing, thing, week before Thanksgiving, 2005, and it was exactly I was finished working on the other show. And he was like, man, remember that show I was telling you about? We shooting it next week, man. I got a part for you on here, man, so come on down. And I'm like, okay, cool. And like, yo, the show should be picked up, whatever, you know, so you should be in, on the roll in a minute. Okay, cool. It took like a year after we did the pilot. And I'm waiting for this job to come. I'm like, I'm just waiting. I, I'm disregarding everything. I'm like, man, nah, I don't wanna do that job. And my, my note to actors out there, always keep working. Never, never wait for nobody to give you anything. Always have your own thing you're doing. Cause I suffered for that. I wound up having to get in a real job. I had wound up working like 11 hours a day. It was hindering my comedy career. Uh, I was hosting a comedy store and my comedy was lacking. And everybody was getting up, coming up, being good. And they would, she wound up firing me. And the funny thing, after Michelle fired me, <laughs> uh, the same day, I got the, I finally got the email from them and saying, we in production next week. And I was like, yo, it's on. And I get to the place and a lot of the familiar faces, my man Brandon Gibson's there. Uh, Nick Thomas, obviously, he's the creator. And oh, Erica Jordan, I got a chance to meet Erica Jordan. We wound up being real cool. I'm like, we on a damn series, man. Like, this is what's up. It was like my five-year plan that worked out pretty much. Favorite moments is when uh, me and Erica had the scene. We were arguing about her having sex with a petrified dude. <laughs> he used to suck. Yeah, that's one of my favorite moments. Ron Jeremy used to be on the set all the time. A lot of porn stars that are legends now were on that show. When That was like their first job. Like, I remember meeting Daisy Duke Marie and, and, um, and what's this a girl named... Um, Nadia Styles was on the show, and Sasha 
Sasha Gray. I remember talking to her about something. She goes, y'all know who that, you know who that was? That's the anal queen. The anal queen. And she wound up doing other stuff. I'm like, shit, what the fuck is the anal queen? Her, uh, Kaylani Lay, I dry hump. Kaylani Lay, my girl Naomi Banks, Chicago Zone. Um, we had a scene together. And like, it made me think that this was gonna go on forever. And no, it's not. You gotta keep working. The worst moment, all the, all the characters in the cast had an episode isolated episode and my episode was I wanted to write a porn movie they had me write out the movie like a black exploitation porn movie and I was like a pimp that was <laughs> that was the devil and Naomi Banks was um, named Honey Love this prostitute who had the, the, the vagina powers then sent me back to hell <laughs> so hey, the parts with Naomi yo always dope but the part that fucked me up was the top of the, the top of the scene when they go to the script, me being a pimp, they got me walking down the street, and was, I'm walking like kind of regular, and they were like, "Nah, I need you to to hip it up, like you know, like super super jazzy and shuffle." You know what I'm saying? Like you know, like coon it up pretty much. And I'm like, "This is this Hollywood shuffle?" And I'm like, "I ain't doing that shit." And he's like, "No, nah, Ronnie, you gotta do it like this, like that." I'm like, "Okay, man, okay." So if they did it again, I did it again. I did my I did my regular walk. We gotta have you walk. I'm like, dude, do you realize what the hell you telling me to do? I didn't care if I got fired then. If there was like two more episodes left, I didn't care. <laughs> like, what you gonna do now? Two more episodes left. They kept it. They 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 kept me walking the way I wanted to walk. They understood. So that was one of the worst moments ever on the set. But overall, man, I say by far best job I ever had. I thought I had friends for life. I do have some cool people that I know. I talk to them. They always good folks and shit. But it, it was some years ago, man. It was 2007. Wow, incredible, man. 15 years ago. So, Canoga Park, favorite job. Favorite acting job ever. All right, here we go. Shout out portion of this week. Shout out portion this week. Always shout out at the end of the show, man. Uh, fellow comedian buddy of mine, you see me on, you look at my page. He's probably on there uh, more than, than any comedian. He's one of my good friends. He's the young, the young lion, one of the young lions I talk about. From Cincinnati, Ohio, is my man, Jeremy Scipio. Jeremy Scipio. <laughs> oh man if this guy is not famous in the next three years i don't know what the hell because this dude lives and breathes the game he wants to be this comic and he is he talks it all the time and i admire he he, he keeps me he don't even know that i he, i admire this dude because he keeps me on my toes because he talks about it or oh, we have no other conversation we done he done been here and stayed the weekend and done shows we went out of town, we drove, we talked. All we talk about <laughs> is comedy. And it's like, yo, I need this dude around me all the time because he keeps it, he just goes with it. Like, yo, this is the life, bro. This is what this is what we do. We need to be talking about this every step. There's no, he don't, he don't watch sports. He don't do, he don't, he don't do other, he don't drink like that. He don't, he don't get high, nothing. This dude just wants to do comedy, man. Shout out to my young bro. God damn it. I'm like, yo, this dude doesn't stop. He doesn't stop. We're on the road and this is all we talk about. It, it is unreal. Nobody else. Nobody else. Jeremy Simpio respects the game more than anybody I know who does comedy. There's no backstabbing. There's none of that. This dude is about the craft every time. I met this dude. And I'm on stage, and he kind of like heckled me. I'm like, who the fuck is this nigga? Like, you know what I'm saying? You know who I am? I'm the king of open mics at the time. You know what I'm saying? Who are you talking about? Then come to find out, I'm supposed to be the one that knighted him. He said one day he was on, and I was sitting in the back of the ha-ha, and I was like, yo, man, where he go, man? And dude was like, oh, man, he outside. Let me go get him. He came back. He said that I told him, man, that was good. And he said he knew he was going to be all right. And I'm like, dude, you going for my word on that? Nothing but love, man. But every time I talk to him, this is all he does. And I'm like, people need passion like this guy. Because if he's not famous soon, it's something wrong with the game, man. That's the show. We're done. Leave a comment. Tell a friend. Something. We need love out here. That's all we need. We need comments and love. So leave that. You at the end. Subscribe, man. You ain't on there, man. So you watch, you laugh, now subscribe. Thank you, guys. We out.